The Firearms Radio Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast. We don't have sound effects like Sean, so we add them in later. <laughs> Those are terrible. <laughs> Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, the big episode 400. We showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else you, as a gun enthusiast, may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, and in this show we'll be discussing grip panels, 10 millimeters, 20 caliber 1022s, pick rails, and some more justice. Uh, of course, as you know... This show is brought to you by our friends over at Primary Arms. Primary Arms seeks to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Our Primary Arms product of the week this week is the CMMG 22 line rifle conversion kit. Because if you don't have one for your AR, you should definitely buy one, uh, assuming you can find twenty two ammo. You know, some of us can. Some of us have a stash of it. I think Tony does, too. Uh, so sign up for Primary Arms Newsletter and more at frn.deal slash PA. And if you use the coupon code FRN when you buy a Primary Arms Optic, they will throw in a free mount of some sort. Uh, they also had awesome black Friday and cyber Monday deals. Uh, so if you didn't catch those, hopefully they'll give you some other cool little sales through December. Uh, with me tonight, at least for a while, we got Tony, Rob and Sean, not the old Sean, but the Sean who owns the network or somewhat (laughs) owns the network. Uh, he he I asked him to stop by for the 400th episode and he uh, of course obliged because I guess he was actually working or something uh, you guys take whatever ever you want so you know because it's episode 400 I'm already drinking uh, I think everybody else is too so cheers 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 mhm uh, now he's just here to make sure we're doing this stuff right yeah, yeah, because because he, he he can't just go listen and you know watch and all this stuff. But you know, hey, yeah, it's it's to listen to us. Yeah, it's nice to have him here. Uh, I so, just want to know when I got demoted. Like, when did I somewhat on the network? Well, I mean, isn't it like a partnership, or am I incorrect? I, I with who? I don't know, some guy in Michigan news. or something. Oh no no. no. <laughs> I own it. Oh, you mean <laughs> decrepit wolf freaking armament or what? It, what's the name yeah. of that thing? Wally Coyote armament. That's what's right. Hey, I could I could have said it was from some dude in Washington that. <laughs> yeah. No. D- d- wait. Let me ask you a question. Does the network suck? If yes, then yes, he owns part of it. If no, then no. It's- oh, then in that case, you own like one hundred and ten percent. You turned it up to eleven. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, so of course we're into our, what did you do in firearms? Uh, since Sean is our guest, we'll let him start if he wants to. Sure. Uh, let's see today. What is this today or yesterday or what? It doesn't matter. It comes out Friday. Okay, perfect. Well today, am I allowed to touch a gun on this show? Uh, yeah, because everything we do is airsoft. Okay, perfect. Yes. I have this airsoft gun. I actually put this optic on my Boring Rifles 6.5 Creedmoor today, and I actually took it to the range and zeroed it at 100 and shot out and got my dope at 200 and 300. And then tomorrow morning, I'll take my hunting ammo and get my dope all the way out to 1,000 and uh, just just get that done. But yeah, I put it on, leveled it, um, and yeah, just really got everything dialed in, and it, it did great. I shot about, I don't know, it was like inch and three-quarter group at 300. And I was shivering because it's cold as hell here in Colorado. And um, literally most of my days are just doing stuff with guns. So that, that's what I did this afternoon. This morning it was something completely different. Yeah. Well, that works. That's, so that's the one you're taking hunting, right? Yeah, it is. I was going to take a 308. Well, originally I was going to take a 30 out 6 But it's a weird uh, Springfield 1903. And it, 
I, I could not find a pick rail for the top to put an optic on. So I was like, okay, scratch that. And then I have a 308 that looks very similar to this one, but I just didn't have time to get an optic mounted and, uh, and everything there. And then I was just like, you know what? 6.5 Creedmoor, whatever. It's antelope, it's deer. It'll kill both of them. We're fine. Yeah. I, I don't think you'll have any problems there. No. No, I mean, like I would prefer something a little bit bigger, but, you know, it is what it is. It's what I had time to do and what I have all the proper gear and equipment and dope for. So we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing it live. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Rob, are you still in the busy season? Uh, no, we're out of the busy season. Awesome. I would let, I went here last week because I was uh, at an undisclosed place doing some uh, hunting and had a great time. Didn't see any deer, but ate a lot of food, did some hunting morning and evening. Of course, the last day we're there, we decided to go out and tend to the feeders, tend to the game cameras and whatnot, and we come around the corner. About 10.30 in the morning, there's this monster buck just chomping down on the feeder. And I'm like, why aren't we in the stands? It was about 10 o'clock. He looked at us, said hi, stuck his tongue out and hauled Boogie the other way. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I got to go back home tomorrow. So that's a, that's a nice way to send me off, you little booger. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't cuss on this radio where I'd be cussing right now. So, <clears throat> yeah, no. I, hey, time in the stand is better than time in the office. That is that's, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, one of my coworkers, uh, my coworker, he's out hunting right now. He was like, sent me a video. Snow. He was like, where, where did this come from? You know? You're kidding me? I'm sitting, in my, I'm sitting in my garage in shorts and a t-shirt. It's beautiful down here in Florida. Well, he didn't send me the video from your garage, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. That would have been weird. <laughs> yeah. That would weird. Well, 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 Sean, remember, Rob's garage is an airplane hangar. That's pretty cool. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not. It's yeah. an undisclosed secret bunker somewhere in Florida. Yeah. It, it's the opposite side of the camera. Nothing fancy's bunker. <laughs> that, that's why he drinks so much. <laughs> dude, dude, look at this watch. Look at this motor airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Tony, um, <laughs> did you do anything? Yeah, actually, um, I'm getting back on the NFA uh, 7.62 by 39 AR that's not NFA. i um, going to reach out to our friends over at uh, Law Tactical Folding and get another. Hopefully, they'll send me either the piece I'm missing because I used it on the Matador Arms um, SKS chassis. And when I packed to move, I packed up that one little piece that goes in the back of the bulk carrier group. That's in my pod, and I won't be seeing that until I purchase a home. So I'm like, hey, guys, uh, could you send the brother another one, please? <laughs> so that's one of the phone calls I got to make or t- uh, emails I got to send out this week. So they, that's what I did. They've got great customer service. Well, I like those guys over there. I mean, like I know them, know them, but it's like, hey, uh, remember when y'all gave me that really expensive thing a few years ago and I used it like for a while? Yeah, I need another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I broke mine. Uh, Impressive. Uh, no, I, well, I didn't break it in normal use. I broke it because I was an idiot and did something that they told me not to do. And I broke it and they replaced it. And even though I offered to pay, they just sent it. And that was not even like, I just, I went to their website just as every customer and did it. And that's what, just what they did for just, you know. So you shot it with it open. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, uh, I wanted to know what would happen. Well, I mean, that's kind of what we do, though. I mean, if they would have sent me one for a review or something, I would have had to do the same thing. Uh, yeah. Well, see, with the SKS chassis, and since it didn't have a bow carrier group, we fired with it open just because it was cool and we live in Jersey. And we can't have a folding stock on a semi-auto unless it's an SKS with a fixed magazine. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I walked that line. I walked that line like Johnny Cash, baby. I <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah, I actually made it to the range, too. Uh, Primary Arms had sent me one of their muzzle brakes, their new ones uh, that work with the chemo system. Uh, I do not have any, a suppressor that works with the chemo system, but I had to try the muzzle brake out, so I was doing some rifle build drills with it. Uh, I also took the X-Wing AR pistol out, too. Uh, running those. I figured I was doing pretty good with build drills. There's one on Instagram. I think it was like one, three, five for six shots, low ready. I figured that was pretty good for me, all A zone hits. Uh, that's pretty much the extent of what I did. Uh, nothing super exciting. 
Uh, working on reviews as usual. Um, but, you know, got some good, decent practice in while I was doing that. Uh, so, you, yeah, Sean? I was going to say, um, I got that as well. And I've completely moved away from the Silencer Co., whatever that system was that yeah. Chemo replaced. Although I do have a can with that on it. And I was like, ah, oh, I got to get that out of the safe again. <laughs> and, like, I, I hate that system with a fiery burning passion. And... Chemo is better than the Silencer Co. Mad Mounts, I think, is what they were called. But I still, I've just like, I've moved totally away from it. I'm like, if I can't direct thread it on, I don't want it. However, um, I know there's a lot of people out there with the chemo stuff from Dead Air, so I right. think it was a good move for Primary to do that. Yeah, and that's uh, the, also with that brake, you can, it's it's got a hole for a pin, so you can mount it on a 13.9 and it makes it 16 inches if that's something you need so it, yeah i thought i thought it was a, i thought it was a good deal too uh it actually worked extremely well i was really surprised at how well that single port brake worked uh, that, that Im- i think they were like 110 bucks yeah so that's similar to the other muzzle brakes that you, that you get right right uh i'm i'm with you though i'm a i don't have a lot of suppressors but i'm a direct thread person i'm just like yeah that's just yeah <laughs> You know, for me, that was the kind of thing where I was like, I want QD. I want it because it's cool and because it's got the little ratchet and I I want that. And it was one of those things where as I learned more about suppressors and did it more and more and more, I just became, I was like, okay, now I see. Now I see the error of my ways. You know, QD is cool and all, but direct thread takes like 10 more seconds and it's way better in every single way. See, but you have to remember, I've been talking to one of your sponsors for 25 years. (laughs) <laughs> tom oh because <laughs> <laughs> he he literally he lives up north and years and years ago for probably it was probably like a 15 20 year period we had machine gun shoots at the local range yeah and we'd see him there every every year you know he'd come down and he'd donate stuff and you know he's friends with the people i bought my machine gun from and stuff like that so you know <laughs> you'd talk to him i remember yeah. him when he looked when he had really long hair so you know? <laughs> I love it. Actually, yeah, Tom is actually the one, Tom Bowers, who we're talking about, is the guy who got me onto direct thread. And honestly, he's taught me more about suppressors than I ever knew in the decade before I met him. He, um, uh, that guy knows so much. I, I, I mean, he'll make your eyes spin back in your head, even if you know a lot. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He, he's an amazing font of information. And he makes fantastic products, too. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, the problem is how many... Uh, Tax stamps did you go through before you realized direct threads a superior method? Fortunately, one. <laughs> For, nice. One. And so, but it was not inexpensive to get there. Uh, I basically bought a Silencer Co. Saker 762 and I had the Mad Mount, which was an extra, I don't know, 300, anywhere between 300 and 400 bucks, something like that, that you tack onto the price of the suppressor. Paid my tax stamp, got it all in, and then it carbon locked on every single thing that I had. Now, in addition to getting the suppressor and the mad mount, I also had mounting devices. And at that point I had two, which were over a hundred dollars each. And then I was like, okay, well this is terrible and I can never get it off. And every time I try to take it off, it's like some, it fails in some new and epic way. And then I heard about the, the chemo and I tried it out and it actually worked pretty good. So I had to literally go buy. Uh, by that point I had probably eight or nine muzzle devices that the, that the mad mount connected to. So I had to go buy eight or nine new ones, which was like almost a thousand dollar investment uh, over, uh, over a year or so. And then that one started carbon locking and failing in new and interesting ways. And I was just like, you know what? I've had it. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I've spent like at this point now, like $2,000 on nonsense. I'm just going to direct thread and I've never had a problem. Since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm Guess who doesn't have that problem in Jersey. <laughs> Am I boring you, Tony? <laughs> oh, I just find it funny. It's like, yeah, I can do none of that. Tony, Tony, none t- of Tony hates that, but no, including take just a muzzle device off a fire uh, off a rifle without having to drill it. All of them have to be pinned, regardless of the length of your barrel. Yeah, that's that's yeah, stupid. A uh, twenty inch AR fifteen. When I did my, <laughs> oh, that's just me. That's me. <laughs> oh, you know. yeah, yeah, you know. My uh, oh, the- mine's got a crush washer on it, so I'm not gonna try to unscrew it. But how does mine, sissy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I built an M16A4 clone, and they cut my bayonet log off 
fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and and I had to put on a comp. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. That what? sucks, man. I, I get it. Like of all the weird things in the in the universe that people get upset about, that that's one of the weird ones. Yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a lot of weird mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, well. Now, I will admit that Jersey and Oregon have one thing going for them. <laughs> really? We don't have to pump our own gas. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you pay about a buck more a gallon. No. Yeah. No. Actually, no. Not really. Yeah. Uh, our regular gas right now, I paid like three thirty a gallon. So, What if you want to pump your own gas? Can you? No. No. If, it, if you have a diesel, like a, you can in Oregon. I thought the Oregon changed that a few no, ago. no, that was only that's only in rural Oregon. So, you know, the good part of Oregon is where you can pump your own gas. <laughs> okay, well, that's n- freaking weird, man. I know. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is. Now, it is. But since Jersey is a refinery state, a lot of offloading goes here, and the refineries are here. That's why our gas prices are less expensive too. Yeah, that we have sense. we have no reasons. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, now that we're done with that, we'll get into the announcements. Our bandwidth sponsor is our buddies over at Patriot Patch Co. Uh, they just released the new patch of the month. Uh, it is the Santa steals all my presents. Looks like he's riding a nice, nice motorcycle and you know he's got a suppressor and it looks like an hk so that tells you what santa's doing <laughs> uh but it's pretty cool uh you definitely yeah, santa hates you just like hk yeah exactly <laughs> hopefully yeah, there's no little nice kids listening theme patches coming out too yeah there's they got a lot of good stuff over there so definitely go check them out uh i think Probably they have a G- it's a g36 sorry to interrupt yeah yeah well you know yeah, it, it's a little weird looking, but yeah, I'm pretty well, sure yeah. that's what it is. But it's G36 ish. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's we, a Tommy build. Well, no, it's a Ryan Ryan build, and you know, <laughs> I notice he's special. he's not on episode 400, even though he started this crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he left and didn't look back. <laughs> yes. Nope. Yeah. Uh, Can't blame him. No, we can't. There's a bunch of other affiliate links, coupon codes, stuff like that. Uh, you can also go to the firearmsinsider.tv and click on the discounts link, and it'll take you to all of those. Uh, we still have patches available. Uh, if you guys don't buy them all, we're just going to probably give them out to our friends at SHOT Show. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, better go to SHOT Show or buy them. So that's, that's your option. Uh, Rob is here, so... He doesn't have to try to muddle his way through the disclaimer like Zane does, uh, even though (laughs) we don't have to read it, but it's still good for Rob to read it for us. Yeah, we don't have the push button automatic reading thing. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. And now for the main product review, Chad is going to tell us about the Walker Defense Nile rail panels. Yes, yes, and I noticed Sean had commented on Instagram about these on somebody's post. Did you get yours yet, Uh-oh. Sean? Uh, no, I need to tell him which ones I need. Yeah, uh, I got gotcha. you. I, I just, yeah, I need to figure out what gun to put them on and then. Yeah, that, well, luckily. I actually really like Walker. Yeah, yeah, I, I love their stuff, actually. I mean, I have, of the two things they've sent me their muzzle brake which works phenomenal uh and then these things which which work great i've even had good pluses from other people i have a few different ones the three panel and two panel ones uh i'll show a picture of them on the video but you can't really see them so screw it uh there's a little short one uh but like we said uh they came out with these rail panels a while back uh, I've actually had them for probably six months throughout the evolution of them, but they're officially released now. Uh, so I did actually publish the review. He's told me I could do it earlier, but I was like, I'll just wait till they're officially reviewed or, or released. Uh, they are called the Nile, which stands for non-slip inlaid element. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more later. Uh, they're basically silicon carbide grip panels for your m handguards. They are 100% made in the USA, and this includes the mounting hardware. Uh, originally, the mounting hardware on the prototypes he sent me were not, and they did change that, so they are American-sourced screws even. Uh, 
denials are pretty thought out. Uh, they use a thin resistant polymer, heat resistant that's some somewhat flexible. Uh, then they lay in the silicon carbide into a pocket that's pretty much molded into the polymer. Uh, it's basically the stuff they use on sandpaper. I don't know what grit it is, but you get the idea. It's a nice grippy surface. It easily attaches to your M-Lock slotted handguard. Uh, it's a little bit flexible, which helps to install it, uh, which makes it nice. They're heat, re- heat resistant, so you know, unless you do mag dump after mag dump after mag dump, you're probably not going to feel it in the panels. Now, around the panels, of course, you're going to. Uh, they are pretty thin, which is part of the reason I love them so much. Uh, they all, all the ones that I got measured around an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, so hardly any thickness at all to them. Uh, they are about 700 thousandths wide. So just under three quarters of an inch. Uh, they don't seem to really hang over the M lock slots on the various, uh, hand guards that I have them on. Uh, they, they're 4.75 inches long for the three M-Lock slot ones. Uh, the grippy part takes up about three and a half inches of that. Uh, they make one and two slot versions. They're about an inch and a half and two and an eighth inch long, respectively. Uh, you can also buy them in combo packs, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if you want a three pack or you want a three slot, some two couple two slots and maybe a one slot you can just combine them in those which gives you so you don't have to buy a three pack of three slots or a three pack of two slots uh they do have an extra mounting feature uh if you look at the back of the rail panels they now have this little clip or two or three depending on what you're dealing with uh it is a nice little added feature it helps secure the rail to the panel uh, under extreme circumstances, uh, it can help a lot. Uh, install the tabs make installation a little bit tricky because you kind of have to start w- with one end of the little M lock rail and kind of work them in. Uh, I had trouble with one of them; it was pretty darn tight going in, so I tapped it on, tapped on it with just a little hammer, uh, and it kind of popped right in. Uh, I literally think you could probably remove the screws. And I don't think the panels would go anywhere. So they're definitely secure in there. You know, I'm of the thing that some people love grip panels. I usually don't like grip panels. Now, I say usually because most of them are quite a bit thicker than these. And it just adds a lot of extra bulk that I'm not looking for. Uh, The Niles are definitely changed my mind in this. Uh, Even if you run them at three six nine o'clock, uh, I don't even really notice the thickness. Like I said, they're pretty thin. Uh, they do sit nice and tight up against the rails, uh, which seems to help. They are pretty slim. Uh, I'm pretty much sold on them as a minimal- minimalist grip panel. Uh, the silicon carbide is pretty much where the Nile shine. Uh, you know, the name... Here we go. The non-slip is for the silicon carbide. The inlaid is be- inlaid is because they put it in there, uh, and then you got the element, which is the whole thing. Uh, super grippy, not enough to tear your skin off, uh, but they seem to work well with gloves on, wet hands, dirty hands. Uh, either way, they make an awesome grip panel. Uh, great surface grip for the your forend. Uh, I do like how they feel uh, over normal slick handguards. Uh, they do give you better control of the rifle, or at least they did for me. Uh, another feature of the Niles that comes to mind is their weight. They pretty much don't weigh anything. Uh, without mounting hardware, a three-slot panel weighs seven grams. Uh, so if you put all three of them on there, it's like three-quarters of an ounce. Uh, so you really don't notice they're on there, even if they're stuck all the way out at the end of your handguard. Uh, as you probably know, with like sandpaper, you can they pick up dirt and stuff like that. Uh, these can do that also. Uh, they actually have an option for what they call a dirt eraser. And yeah, you heard that correctly. It's an eraser, and it pulls the dirt out of the silicon carbide. Uh, I don't know how it works. But it does. It's pretty much magic from my from my opinion. 
Uh, there is a picture of it in with the rail panels in the review. I have it here in the bag because that's where I keep it. You just kind of rub it on and the dirt, it pulls the dirt out. I don't know how it works. Uh, as we know, Walker's pretty much done it again. Great product. Uh, like I said, the Nero Brake was the first product that I reviewed of theirs and loved it. The Nile rail panels are pretty much exactly the same. They're an awesome product from a great company. So we'll get into the Firearms Insider eight key points. The claim to fame, of course, super grippy m rail panels, if you hadn't figured that out. Target market, pretty much anyone wanting a good grip on their support hand firearm, rail, anything like that. Uh, features and benefits, they are made from heat-resistant polymer. They are thermal-resistant. Uh, the silicon carbide grip surface provides aggressive gripping surface. Uh, they do have a radius edge for snag reduction. They are super slim. We already went over the weight. Uh, the screws do feature an anti-vibration patch, which is basically a resetting Loctite on them to prevent loosening. Uh, of course, they include an Allen wrench, and they are 100% made in the USA. You can get one, two, and three m sl- slot versions. Uh, you know, there aren't really reviews out there, so I didn't put anything in there. The price points, they're $49.99 for a three-pack, $59.99 for a four-pack. This is the three-slot panel ones. They go down in price from there. Or you can get the custom combos. Uh, we do have an discount code it's insider 15 so you get 15 percent off i think right now they may still have black friday sales where you can get more than that so don't use our code just use theirs so if you need it now contact walker defense so for our rating the pros of course the grip texture the dirt eraser is pretty cool i would definitely recommend it if you're running it in a lot of dirty environments uh they are thin uh, you can get the custom package quantities and lengths, which is pretty cool. Uh, and they are 100% made in the USA. The cons is they can pick up the dirt fairly easily, uh, and sometimes they're hard to install. Uh, besides those, I still did give it a score of 9, which is amazing. Uh, if you guys have any questions on it, you can hit me up. If not, you know, we'll go on to more more pressing stuff. So this is m only? It is m only. So, okay, and the, the small one, the the, the one panel one. Yeah, it, how does that does that stick okay, or because it's only got it one do, screw on it? It does because I mean you're probably not going to see in this picture. It's got mm-hmm. this little piece here. Let me let me mm-hmm. zoom in. That little clip piece okay. clips on, and then okay. and then you got the M lock piece. So it does actually stay quite well. In fact, the rifle I was running this weekend. Uh, has a has a one panel and a two panel on it because it's one of those weird hand guards that only has a couple slots in the front and the two panel would interfere with the sling quick QD uh, so I put the one panel okay. on there I think Sean fell asleep uh. <laughs> no I'm here I was actually just uh, figuring out my mechanical offset on this optic since I just zeroed it and, and set my caps. That's good. Uh, whenever you want to sk- skip out on a Sean, just let us know, and we'll we'll let you pimp whoever you're pimping. No, not at all, man. I was I was just uh, using my time wisely because you know you got to know your mechanical offset on an optic. You you do. So do you go all the way to the top and then dial it back down? Okay, yeah, j- down. just curious. Yep, nineteen point five mils is. Uh, my mechanical offset on this and the reason why that it's important chad is why uh because that way you have a firm stop to w- know where your zero is set yeah because if you don't have a zero stop if the company doesn't want to pay royalties to the company that owns a patent on that which happens a lot if you if you dial and then forget where you're at and you have to rotate like more than 10 mils or 10 moa or whatever your measurement is uh and you forget what rotation you're on you'll be screwed and you won't you won't really have any good way of figuring out what your zero was unless you know your mechanical offset. Right. And, and years and years ago, I had that problem where I had dialed up to like 500 yards shooting building ground squirrels, as we call them. We call them sage rats, but they're like small prairie dogs, literally. <laughs> and I had left it there. And, of course, then I went to dial it back down. And, I, you know, I didn't like dial it all the way up and then dial it down. I was like... Yep. This, of course, was when I was young and stupid, so now I'm just old and stupid. But I have learned at least one or two things. 
no, I'm yeah, totally. I, I made the same mistake once and I was like, well, okay, forget my life. Only once, and, huh? Uh, well, I made it yeah. twice. That was the second time. <laughs> Hopefully I never make it again. But now I'm just like religious about getting the mechanical offset when I zero just because it, it was it was frustrating, right? Because you spend all that time like figuring out your zero and I mean there is an easy way to figure it out, but not as easy as just counting the clicks. Right. That's exactly right. Well, now we'll get into the product spotlight and discussion. And it's oh, by the way, I'm not leaving. You can never get rid of me. I'm here for for the rest. I'm now a cast member. Uh, (laughs) Oh, okay. So you replaced Zane. Well, I could. I wouldn't say replaced. I would say improved. Well, we won't. We won't (laughs) argue. Yeah, it was tons of room for that. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it's not a very big step. (laughs) The bar was painted on the floor. Now, now, (laughs) now you. See, the thing is, is that we, we are one of the few shows that has two Florida men on it, but now it looks like we only have one. Yeah, just one Florida man right now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. Yeah. So the product spotlight and discussion. First up is the Smith & Wesson 10mm M&P 2.0. Uh, MSRP is 665 bucks. Uh, it's kind of fitting that Sean's here since he loves the M&P pistols. I do, but I hate 10 millimeters, so it's like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> I, I, I get you, but this pistol actually intrigues me because I do like 10 millimeter for certain applications, but we'll get to that later. Uh, as you know, it is 10 millimeter. I put the full-size one in here. They do make a compact version. Uh, so this one has the 4.6-inch barrel, uh, 15 plus one rounds. Uh, it does come with an optics cut and optic height sights, or so... Two pluses right there. Uh, this one does not have the thumb safety because, you know, unless you live in Jersey, you probably don't want it. Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, there's a total length on the thing is 7.9 inches. Uh, of course, it's an m 2.0, so all the other stuff is pretty much the same. The weight is 29.3 ounces. It does have their 18-degree grip angle, uh, their flat face trigger. Uh all the other M and P stuff. It's a one in ten twist barrel, which for ten millimeter, I don't know if that's great or not. Uh, it's standard. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what kind of what I figured. I'm like, but either way, it's new. I do think for a lot of reasons, I like ten millimeters. They are heavy. Uh, this one, this one is not particularly heavy uh, for what it is. Uh, Fifteen plus one rounds. I. Me personally, I want to see how large the handle is because, like, the Glock 10 millimeters, that's the thing is it's like, no, I don't like them. The grip's just too big. Uh, but uh, to carry something like if you're hunting, like Sean should do, something like this might might be useful to a lot of people. I mean, it's not going to be a concealed carry or anything like that. Why not? Okay. I don't know. I carried a, a 10 millimeter Glock long slide for a while. Well, you guys are weird, okay? You know? <laughs> <laughs> either way it's new it has all the, everything that everybody needs on it like optics cuts and such uh i don't know what the plate is for plate system or what optics fit on it because of course smith and wesson like most people don't tell you on their website uh, but that Hopefully which that's everything that that's what i would hope uh but because uh, it's sm- i would guess it's probably designed for their optics yeah so it's a crimson trace optic <laughs> yeah, because that's what you think about when you think about putting the red dot on. Yeah. Um, I'm like, let me get that thing that Crimson Trace just airbrushed their logo on. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, thank hey, you. Can, hey, can I get the pistol grip with the laser in it, too? And okay. I don't really hate 10 millimeter, by the way. Like, I, I posted a meme today, and it made everybody big mad. Uh, but I actually, well, I have a 10 mil. We have a 10 millimeter on the show, and then we're going to be talking about a 22 uh, long rifle barrel. So you can piss up both ends of the spectrum. Off, I, I, yeah. I, I, I tried to do my work well. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, 10 mil is fine, but 22 LR, I won't stand for it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't <laughs> shoot. Tell pra- us how you hate puppies, too, bro. Why are you at it? Well, prairie dogs, that's what he's going to tell you he hates later. <laughs> well, no, he's trying to shoot prairie dogs above 50 yards with the 22. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking at it like, yeah, congratulations, Smith & Wesson. Way to jump right on 10 millimeter bandwagon four decades later. Hey, <laughs> you, last thing you want to do is jump on something and it turns out to be a trend. <laughs> so right. way to get in. <laughs> um, no, I mean, actually, no. But Smith & Wesson was actually the first, right, semi-automatic 10 millimeter. 
I think I think you're the correct. FBI, at least the FBI adopted it. Yeah, that well, was a Smith. Fifty nine oh seven or six or I don't know what don't it was, know. but yeah, one of them. I don't know. Five. But listen, yeah. I I am not in, and this is not forgotten weapons. Um, <laughs> congratulations, getting in on the market now. I think it's a smart move. Um, it's it's an actual market now. Um, so. Way to go. And, of course, you have the 2.0, which has really good grip and uh, has a good trigger. Now, I've heard this trigger is actually better than their 2.0 normal trigger, and it's somewhere near their Shield Plus trigger. So, hey, listen, <clears throat> Smith came out, and they brought them all with us at the, one of my diversity shoots in Pennsylvania, and I do have to say it is a sweet trigger. So, cool. Hey, knock yourself out. I find no need for it. Um even though I have like a box of 10 millimeter floating in the back of my vehicle right now. Isn't that a crime? <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> I mean, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have a box of 10 millimeter. Good right. call. Good now, call. now, if you're watching the show, you just saw Tony get up, go out to his vehicle. I checked. I checked. <laughs> I checked. He's faster than you would think. Yeah. Much faster. Much I'm, faster. I'm like that. The, the big black dude from what is it, Lock, Talk and, Lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels? I was just going to call you Flash, but hey, whatever. <laughs> whatever. That's close enough. That's anyway. Um, in the bathtub. That's, that's Splash. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> no problem. You got anything on it, Sean? Or you're just. Uh, no, actually, I do love MMPs. I shoot MMPs, uh, I don't know, 62% of the time. And. They work every time. I mean, yeah, mine do, actually. <laughs> No, I'm just one hundred percent of the time they work sixty two percent of the time, but <laughs> no, I, I think it's good. I do think it's behind, like everybody said. I think it has the features that the people want, and m m p is the superior platform, so like it's a win, yeah, there you go, okay, so that was the Smith and Wesson ten millimeter m and p two point oh I shortened the name oh. over what they call it because I figured Tony would complain that it was. Blah, 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 2.0, blah, blah, blah. It's because you don't have to type that down. <laughs> <laughs> they try to get oh. every name they have trademarked on every pistol mm-hmm. they have. Performance Center 2.0, M&P, Military and Police. Yeah. I'm like, Mutt and Jeff. Yeah, the, yeah. What, what is it? The Smith & Wesson M&P Performance Center Easy 9mm. Yeah. I yeah, think they got all the words. Well, yeah, I, I think I think you missed a few, probably. So probably, yeah. I feel yeah. like I did because I didn't run out of breath. Yep, with thumb safety. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Got them all with thumb yeah, safety. No, I hate that thumb safety. Anyways, hey, the, uh, the it looks like they use an optic plate. Okay, uh, a little adapter over the uh, <gasps> slide. So we forgot the word optic ready. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's in the name too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into something that's a little more interesting. Uh, it is the V7 1022 20 caliber barrel. Uh, MSRP is 330 bucks, so it's not cheap. But I was so curious about this, I actually called V7 and asked him about it. Uh, because what this does is this goes in your 1022, and it essentially necks down your 22 caliber bullet to 20 caliber, which, as it says, will give you better accuracy just because it's consistent on necking it down so if your bullet's a little bit off in size it's now necked down to the barrel size uh they say it increases the weapons reliability because you're increasing the pressure slightly with standard 22 ammo uh it also gives you better ballistic coefficient because your your bullet is now slightly longer than it was uh, and this is all using standard 22 ammo. Uh, it is threaded half 28. So when you want to put your suppressor on it, uh, you can get flutes on it if you want. It is a standard, like we said, heavy barrel. So it weighs 26.3 ounces. Uh, it is made down south of me. Uh, but either way, they said it's in, the, I can't remember what length it necks down, but it's in the first like three quarters of an inch that it necks the bullet down. Uh, so, you know, standard ammo feeds in it, uh, does that kind of stuff. I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, actually, when I talked to them, they said they've actually tried us tried necking it down even more than the two hundred four caliber. Uh, 
and they said it worked, but you know, pressure's kind of increased a little more. But I thought it was kind of cool because nobody's really doing it. I don't know exactly how much extra ballistic coefficient you're going to get out of it, uh, but I understood the accuracy gain uh, just because your your actual caliber twenty twos are not known for being accurate when you measure them. So so there's that. Uh, I just ha- like I said, I happened to think it was pretty cool. I found it the other day when I was looking for the three hundred blackout pistol we talked about last week. <laughs> See, I'm I'm like. It's cool if it does what it says, but I'm like, if you're really looking for accuracy in a 22 rifle and you want to build a precision rifle, then you use match ammo. You buy Ely and with a match chambering and you actually put the work in to make sure you have that. Like you're telling me I get some of the Remington golden bucket garbage and put it in. All of a sudden I'm shooting clover leaves. You're shooting better <laughs> is what they say. Uh, yeah. When I talked to them, they said they actually get repeatedly about the same as like a Volkortz and barrel. So yeah, but what the price is is about the same as a Volkortz ex- ex- barrel. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, so I, I, <laughs> I would be more curious if how well it works for like the twenty two. What is it? Long range precision shooters or. Mm-hmm. How, that would be who'd want this thing would be the long range right. precision shooters or yard shooters. Yeah. it might work really well for people like Sean when they're shooting at prairie dogs because they might be able to shoot one yeah, at but, 80 yards instead of 50 yeah well, and again, you know, <laughs> they're all I mean, I bought a, sorry I'll say, I, I bought a tactical <laughs> solutions 1022 and I was shooting tennis balls at 100 yards consistently with it so it's you know yeah what were you going to say Sean I, I was going to say, like, prairie dogs in Colorado are at 150. I think our prairie dogs are smarter than everybody else's or something. Yeah. I don't think they, so because, like I said, we don't have prairie dogs in Oregon. We have sage rats that are about half the size of prairie dogs. They're literally mm-hmm. a squirrel. So they're literally, you know, six to eight inches tall. And Any- th- they're stupid. So what you do is you sit there and you shoot them all with 22s at like 50 yards. 17 HMRs work way better, but we're not going there today. <laughs> and and see and then what happens is is they all get smart for a second and mm-hmm. i think they're kind of like dogs and then the ones at 100 yards pop up so you start popping off shots at those and then the ones at 30 yards decide to start sh- showing up <laughs> so then you it's just like shoot all that yeah it, it literally is it's like <laughs> if you get a good day it's like they show up at 30 and 50 and 75 or something like that of course they're way out there and that's when you break out the 17 or something even larger yeah, something better than 22 <laughs> yeah yeah well understand you're dealing with late 1800s technology i think people kind of ignore that because so, that's where the 22 comes so from. were you born before or after the 22 was invented tony that's when i that's the year i took your mom to the prom oh okay so you were <laughs> you were you were born before that's all i need to know <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> So, yeah, man, I mean, I, I see it as interesting. That's about, I mean, it's interesting, but that's 300 and something for a barrel. What are you using? Are you a precision shooter? Then you're probably buying a precision barrel and precision ammo. Mm-hmm. You're not grabbing a box of uh, a bolt pack and seeing what it'll do. Right. And, and my the thing that I would hope out of this is, yeah, it's a lot of money to spend on a barrel, but you could get better accuracy so if you're shooting varmints at closer distances that the cheap ammo would work better than the not having to buy match ammo that's and another thing i wanted to point out a fun thing about 1022s and its ability you can just have fun building precision in the most accurate 1022s you can and it still doesn't break the bank oh yes now it does yeah well it could (laughs) it could but still yeah, yeah. Well, you're talking to us pores over here because I know Sean has one and I have one. Uh, those those full auto twenty twos are, you know, <laughs> super expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but they're oh, no. you know, they they are so much fun. It doesn't matter what platform they are. If you got a twenty two conversion, full auto, yeah. Or back when you could use a slide fire stock on the ten twenty two. All right. <laughs> back, in, back in the day with, with, a, with a silencer. Using yes. subsonic ammunition. That's right. Don't even need hearing protection. Mm-hmm. 
So that was the V71022, 20 cal barrel. Uh, next up is something that kind of works for 22 ARs or the Brownells BRN 180s or something to this effect, depending on what you're doing. It's the Strike Industries AR Pick Rail Adapter. MSRP is fifty one ninety five. Uh, it's it's pretty much nothing super special. It basically goes on the back of your AR where your buffer tube goes, and it puts a pick rail on it. It also has options for a QD mount, uh, a few things like that. You can get it, of course, in their signature like red and black and FDE. Uh, you, you know, if you're looking for something like that, uh, like I said, if you're building like a BRN-180 clone or a or a 22 conversion, something like that. Well, also uh, for that, what what, it, what does Matador Arms call their 9 millimeter? Oh, yeah, their Montgo 9. This would work yeah. awesome for also. That would work great for that because I've, I've watched everybody but me uh, shoot one of those. And, and, and uh, me. I haven't shot one yet either. Sean probably has. Yeah. I have. Yeah, he was down there with <laughs> Sean. Was down with Sean at Iraqi Veteran yeah. 8080 at Range Day. I was. I yeah. was. Yeah. So I yeah, hope you guys rub beards or something. We did more than that, Tony. Oh, I'm man. jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, beards. something like oh, this would be would be awesome for that. Uh, price seems about right. Uh, it's a couple bucks more if you want the colored versions, but. You hey, know. watch your mouth. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> are we allowed to say that? <laughs> we are when it's a pl- when when we're talking about red and FDE. Uh, uh, when we're not talking about the uh, early baseball teams, <laughs> Satchel Page on it with Satchel Page on it. Oh, 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 oh. oh. So, all right. I have the KNS Precision uh, stock plug adapter pick rail type thing. Yeah. It's very similar to this, but I actually think that the Strike Industries um, is is uh, the superior alternative uh, on, on this for right now. I, I don't have it in hand, um, but right. I think that it looks better. It seems to assemble easier and better. I was just looking to try to see how it indexes because that's that's the important part right that it needs to index and be tight but also in the same spot and i think i see how they do that it's um it yeah, just looks like a much more fluid and and graceful solution than the kms precision it's two dollars more but like who cares yeah yeah that would, point's two dollars yeah it's not like it's yeah. 20 bucks more and you're paying 80 bucks for one and yeah yeah i i saw it and i was like oh this is cool i'm glad they're bringing it out uh like you said, it looks like it attaches fairly solidly and indexes halfway decently. So, yeah, I'm down with this one. Uh, Aaron from WLS he ordered one today. Actually, we, we we spent like 30 minutes talking about it, just trying to figure out which one he should get and uh, which one was better. And it seems like you know, as long as it's constructed well, this one seems to be really uh, a, a good, very graceful solution. Yeah, and and that's yeah. the thing is it's it's made out of like aluminum so you're not anodized so it's not like it's going to be constructed really any differently unless you get bad machining or something which most of the strike industry stuff i've had the machining's top notch really for what it is now i i I don't know i i like it but i got a question sean because i hear this a lot snide comments about people when you talk about red anodized furniture on things it's like some kind of noob a mark of a noob to have red furniture and i'm like i've been around long enough to watch everything you like today be the mark of a noob yeah yeah (laughs) well the first ar rifle that i ever put together has some red anodized parts on it so i mean what the people say seems to fit right like i I have some red anodized stuff but if you go to you know uh slash r slash plebeian ar on reddit it's filled with a sea of red anodized parts. And like, I know some people like anodized red parts and I think that they look pretty cool. Uh, so ultimately have what you think looks cool. And really, if people make fun of you on the internet, who cares? They, they're just sad idiots that, you know, that yeah. have any friends. Yeah. Well, well, when we put together the Rob rifle, when we put together the Rob rifle, thank you, Rob, uh, because he donated an Adam's Arms 16-inch upper to us. I made sure I put some red furniture on it because everybody is not a tactical Timmy. 
And when I'm introducing firearms to the soccer mom or the single 20 something lady who is the most adventurous of her clique at work. Yeah. Showing up with a, a, a M60, a M4 clone does absolutely nothing for these. Well, <laughs> like yeah. so. And, and, <laughs> and, and you're talking to the guy with a, uh, Purple, purple furniture, AR. Yeah, a purple nerpo. So, yeah, 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 I, I exactly. definitely think. I think color color is a really good thing when it comes to putting together ARs, and I'm glad uh, Strike Industries does. Uh, pretty much as a standard, have at least three colors when they put stuff out. You know, here's the problem though. I think I think where this mostly comes from is that yes. You know, when you're new, you want to put colors on it and stuff because you haven't been bullied into submission by the Illuminati of the Internet. Uh, but at the same time, you see a lot of big mistakes being made, just like very cheap airsoft parts and very questionable choices as, with regards to functionality and stuff like that. So the red anodizing kind of mixes with some of the really poor choices being made. And I made those poor choices, too. And I think that they may be two separate things, but they're so often seen together that, that basically you can't have one without the other. And that's like this. One like, takes the heat. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah I, I, yeah. I think you're right. Of course, my first AR is like sponge painted camo. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I want the complete opposite, but we're talking like Krylon sponge painted. So it's, it's not like Cerakoted or anything cool, but amazingly, it's been that way for like 10 years and it still holds up, but <laughs> but you know, I, I I get it. You know, colors. But hey, they make normal colors too. So yeah, yeah. So that was the Strike Industries Air Pick Rail Adapter. I guess you'll have to head over to We Like Shooting someday and figure out what it's like. Uh, if Aaron likes it or not. Uh, next up, uh, we have a knife. Uh, I was hoping Zane was going to be here, but of course he's not. Uh, it is the Kaiser Justice. Of course, I'm pretty sure that I'm frozen up, or you guys are frozen up, but since I'm recording, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is, like I said, the Kaiser Justice. Uh, it has G10 scales on it. Uh, it's running. It is a flipper. Uh, it's got a semi-serrated blade, and when I say semi-serrated, I mean it's got very little serrations on it. Uh, it does have a glass breaker, too, if that really matters to you. Uh, MSRP is like a hundred bucks. They're on sale for like seventy right now. It's a drop point blade, eight point seven inches long. The blade's three point eight inches. Uh, it is N six ninety blade steel. Uh, the handle is four point nine inches long. Tip up carry. It weighs five point one five ounces. Uh, it is in, you know, basically FDE but desert or whatever they want to call it. Uh, you know, it looks it looks decent. Uh, for just, you know, everyday pocket knife. Uh, the clip doesn't look terrible. I think it's made in China. The steel is okay. China. What steel is that? I mean, is that anywhere near D2? Or it is, it, that it just... is. I think N690 is, if I remember correctly, I looked it up once, and it, I think it's pretty much equivalent to about D2, but like a stainless variant. All right, because I was looking at it, and I'm like, one, the... Uh, their serrations, I don't even know why you have them. It's like the front serrations on uh, Smith & Wesson M&P. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's great, but what is that? Yeah. Um, you put it on for looks. Uh, it's almost a six-ounce pocket knife, so I'm looking at this as more like a work knife. Mm -hmm. um, it uses, like, solid, uh, what do you call that? It, instead of having the holes in it uh, underneath the G10, it, it's like solid frame. Oh yeah, like underneath, it, yeah, yeah. It's using like an, a steel or aluminum frame that the scales just bolt to, basically. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. I mean, all I'm saying is, usually when I carry stuff in my pocket, I have a knife, I have some other stuff. So now you're just adding, you know, that whole ounce is equal my pants slipping off kind of thing. That's what that we is. don't want. That it's eight point seven five inches long. Uh, like I have a tape measure being held up right now that is eight point seven five inches. That's that's pretty long, but the blade is 3.75, so the blade is kind of short, and the handle's actually quite long. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I... So it has a glass breaker in the back. That's one thing that probably adds to it. Um, I don't know, because they say you can't even feel the glass breaker, so I don't know how it works if you can't if it doesn't extend past where you can feel it at. I was checking it out. 
and it's a solid looking work knife. And I saw the price down to like fifty two dollars on uh, Knife Center. So right. yeah, <laughs> but, they're not uh, not super expensive. I, I mean, yeah, we're looking at the Kaiser site, not places where yeah. you can get it cheaper. So, and I think it's been around a while. I don't think it's mm-hmm. one of their brand yeah. new versions. So I was looking at it when they took it apart because they have the stainless steel one too, and pretty much you get in what you pay for. Um, you get in a fifty something dollar knife right. um, that you can take apart. And it would look there are other knives, man, that I would probably pick up that we've already talked about, like a Civivi, <laughs> um, <laughs> like uh, some Kershaws. Yes, but hey, listen, options is options, and uh, just, why not? Just uh, like I the- still find it. Oh, I was going to say, just like with guns, options options are always better. Always better. Um, I just I just question the small length of uh, serrated edge. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least maybe if it was twice as you know twice the length, like it was halfway down the blade, it would make more sense. Next next week, I already I already have plans for something for Zane that is is a Civivi because they came out with something with semi serrated blade finally. <laughs> yeah, and I'm starting to look more and more at smaller fixed blade knives. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, like, did you did you? Well, you haven't seen it yet because I haven't published it yet. Uh, Rusty did a review of an easy fixed blade with I think like a three inch blade. Oh really? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll probably post it up later this week. Yeah, because I've been carrying them for a while now. Um, Actually, I started out with a full size fixed blade with the Cold Steel GI Tanto that I used to carry in my pocket. <laughs> That's just a tiny knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With, you know, it, I think it had what a seven inch blade. I don't know. It was huge. That's what she um, said. I, well, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you've never heard anyone tell you that. You're I right. know that. I'm just. I mean, that's why I tell people that because I'm hoping they did. At least they got something out of it. <laughs> what do you got there, Sean? Yeah, that's my fixed blade that I carry every day. Yep. There you go. Is it like, a, like a mini Quiken from Noble Knife Design? Like a two and a half, two and three quarter inch blade? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I do have a tape measure here. Yeah, we know, we know that. Uh, yeah, three inch blade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I'm like, if you have, in my opinion, it takes all the iffiness because I've had knives fold back on me. I've had them break. Um, I'm like, it takes all that out of the equation. Then I started to carrying a, a cold steel light hunter. Um, it was inexpensive. It was six blade, and I beat the hell out of that thing. Um, and then just bought another one because they were like twenty bucks. And if they were folders that were strong, they would probably cost double that, just because you'd have to have a really tight locking system for them to actually work. So uh, there's a thing to it, especially now we have what uni clips that can work with these things, and they can clip inside your pocket. Yeah, it's a way to go, and it's a lot lighter than a folder. Well, excuse me, it's a lot lighter than some folders, Correct. because again, you don't have all the liners and liner locks and all that other stuff, man. So it's just something that people should look into. An yeah. option. I got gotcha. you. So that was the Kaiser Justice. Uh, we don't have any listener feedback, so we don't have to pull a Sean and offer squares up. Uh, <laughs> Not me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you know, when your computer's from 1985, yeah, I get like, it. Geez. Come on, Jeremy, get it together. <laughs> it's, it's actually, oh, yeah. It's actually funny because I I officially, I mean, you worked in IT. I think you know exactly why. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And I could fix it in like two minutes, but I don't care. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. It's, it's a good joke. So that leaves us Tony. Well, one, Jeremy reading feedback is one of the funniest parts because i mean it is the epitome of a hooked on finex commercial oh god it's terrible it is freaking hell it was almost as bad as rob reading our disclaimer <laughs> it's not that bad we love you okay. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk about the second is for everyone diversity shoot you see this patch right here this is my 2a4e bubbles patch through black swan tactical so if you want to support the work we do and also help out john crump of uh Virginia's GOA. These are limited. We probably have about a dozen left. Ten dollars. Help supporters. That's cool. Also talking about supporting, this comes out Friday. I think you might have one day when you hear this to donate to the birthday fund I have on Facebook. Um 
It'll be in uh, Simon Says Train IG account in my bio. Please click. We're trying to donate to CNJFO, which is an organization in New Jersey that's trying to get us to not have to have justifiable need as part of our permitting process to carry concealed. They have they have sponsored Supreme Court cases. They have uh, entered amicus briefs. And uh, it's a very important grassroots Second Amendment group that's been helping us since they first came out. They've been volunteering at our events and introducing people to firearms in many different ways. And they are friends of ours. So if you listen to this live, please go on my Simon Says Train or the Second Is For Everyone Facebook page and make a donation. I really appreciate it. What's going on with us? I think I'm just going to take it easy for the rest of the year. Um, I'm just going to have to ride December out. I missed the November 22nd diversity shoot because I was actually moving. Um, and now that I'm here, I am not going to try to rush the diversity shoot before the middle of December. It's just, it's not fair to anybody involved, including the ranges that take the time to close their range down to allow us to be there. So we're, when we have the schedule, we are doing the website, we're going to be at SHOT Show. If they have the Great American Outdoor Show, this is some stuff for 2020. Going to be there. I plan on being with Kevin Dixie out in St. Louis. So 2020 is going to be a really big deal, and I can't wait to be a part of it. I'm also working with someone to actually do diversity shoots around the country and have it sponsored by them. Hopefully it works out. So that's what we're doing. And if you want to support us, go to diversityshoot.com. I've got a new podcast coming out. I just got to finish up the commercials and put them in. And I'm going to get on the schedule because I have a line of people that actually want to be on the show in 2022. So it's going to be great. And sponsorship. All that's 2022 is going to be big. Nice. And so thank you guys for supporting me. This is a 400 episode and I think I've been on like 300 and change. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't, I don't know how long it's hundred and some was where you came on or. Yeah, it's like the early hundreds, and the whole purpose was to come on and tell people about the diversity shoot, and here we are at 400, still going strong. I really appreciate the support I get from you guys. Uh, right now, oh, that the thing I have going, it started off at $200 limit. Now we're over $600, and it's because of people that listen to the show, people that follow Firearms Radio Network, I really appreciate the Firearms it. Radio totally Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms do, Insider like Gun and Gear all. Podcast. And thanks, John, also for keeping me on even after you took off the Because you know I carry these. I carry these sorry suckers. <laughs> <laughs> I know Dominate what the secret is. It's called a weight. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we can't physically move him. To bring him <laughs> here. No. No, I'm one of the great Negroes. Don't really Joe Biden told me so. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Quest. Tony <laughs> said that, not me. <laughs> that was going to be funny. Well, whatever. Look, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not great. What's wrong? What are you saying, John? <laughs> <laughs> <Duh. laughs> so, I'm touching that one. So yeah. I was like, new microphone. Who uh, is? I, my mic's broke. Help me. I'm like, don't make me say it, Tony. <laughs> So you can send Let's us. Let's go to the wrap up real quick, Chad. Yep. Send <laughs> questions, comments, or feedback to. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> nice. Hey, I'm not to you yet. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're just going to let Tony get away with that, right? All right. Well, of course. I mean, we have of to, course. right? Get away with what? <laughs> uh, but since, uh, you know, since you didn't let me finish, Sean. Thank you for coming on our 400th episode because, you know. Words, they hard. They Words, are after they drinking so too much. Uh, <laughs> you know, if they don't know where to find you, where can they find you? Um, I don't know. I'm around. But honestly, like, congrats on 400 shows. That's, <laughs> that's uh, I know how much work goes into that. I know how much dedication goes into that. And I, I don't know that people kind of get like how much that actually is and how much work goes into that and how many people have to come together at similar times and uh, like every single week and, and do this very consistent thing. So I just want to say congratulations to you guys like that, that. It's a huge accomplishment. Like how many people do 400 of anything? Right? This, is, this is true. And I, I think, I mean, I came on a, when did I take it over? Like hundred and Right after Tony came on, so like yeah. 150 or so, so I'm at like 250 or so. And yeah, you either believe uh, uh, when Ryan left, he elevated the show by bringing me yeah. on or tried to sabotage it. You have to figure out which one. 
Well, it hasn't seemed to hurt us any, so, you know. All right. (laughs) And I do have to say, twice I did this show from a hospital bed. You did. You did. So (laughs) Tony's up on us. That's dedication. Because I've skipped out before for, you know, family issues and stuff, so. You know, but, you know, that's family. But thank you, Sean. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate the network for supporting us and letting us talk about all this stuff. Uh, now we can. Has, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say it has nothing to do with the network. It has all the, everything to do with you guys. Like, uh, keep up the fantastic work and I'll stop interrupting. Okay. <laughs> Send questions, comments. Just or, kidding. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Feedback hey, too. Calm down, AA Ron. Yeah, that's right. We, uh, I remember I have a mute button too. <laughs> uh, send us call with everything at gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. And check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network. And I had to highlight this because Sean changed it at firearmsradio.net. <laughs> uh, this is so for the next month and a half I figure out what I'm doing uh, don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider for all this stuff uh, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Firearms Insider and thanks to Sean he's making it even a larger podcast than normal so it's still the largest pound for pound podcast on the network and we are out If you've enjoyed this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast, then go to firearmsradio.tv to hear more firearm-related shows.